So welcome along everybody to our webinar and we're delighted to have you and we're very thrilled to have Maria from the University of Sydney with us. And Maria, of course, is well known as an incredible educator. I've got to say, loved and respected by her students. This is something we're all very aware of. And of course, Maria, you've also always been known for the innovations that you go out and find, but you, just, you don't just find them, you make sure that they get implemented so that your students can have the best possible learning experience. So Maria, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to perhaps maybe you'd like to introduce and tell us a little bit more about your own background, what discipline you were in and so on. And of course, then you're going to introduce some of your fabulous prior students who have engaged yes. with, with you in the past and with Quitch as well and hear, hear some stories from them. So I'll hand it over to you for a few moments, Marie, and then I'll pop by and ask you some more questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Green. Uh, it's a big pleasure to join you today for this session. Thank you for having me. Uh, and uh, I'm always very keen to share experience because I strongly believe that it's only together, together, we can actually co-create this environment that will be supportive uh, to learning and actually achieve something. Uh, about my background, very briefly, I mostly have uh, industry experience. I'm uh, new, relatively new to academia and all my industry experience is related to communication. I used to be chief communication officer for big companies in the country, in Russia. <laughs> uh, and uh, I completed a PhD there. Uh, and uh, after I relocated to Australia, I started to engage into teaching and learning. And uh, I realized that this is probably something that I was missing out all my life. Uh, well, uh, I have a uh, formal pedagogical teaching education uh, for starters, so I'm kind of back to my basic uh, instincts, and I'm very, very happy about that, and I'm very excited uh, to see our students, my students joining us today, because they are our graduates, and believe it or not, but uh, they are, they, we have, we had this unit of study two years ago already. And the power of innovation and bringing all of us together is so strong that these amazing ladies and Christopher, who we, we will see later, joined us in a chiffy and they are with us. So right now I work uh, with the University of Sydney. I am lucky to belong to the University of Sydney Business School. And as you can see, uh, my background, discipline of work and organizational studies, that is, that does redesign the future of work and organizations. And uh, I like this background. I actually made it because I like to see all uh, the discipline, all our community, and as if we are still in normal. So I uh, will yeah. let my uh, Carol and Michelle introduce themselves, and uh, Christopher will introduce himself himself later. Thank you, Maria. Carol, do you want to start? I Okay, I can start. So uh, two years ago, I went to the uh, University of Sydney and did my master degree. And I majored in marketing and uh, this people management and organizations. So like two majors. And uh, so after that, I worked in Sydney for a while in a local company doing kind of the marketing stuff. And then because of this COVID-19 stuff, and now I am in China right now. So, but for, for um, just for now, my job is like the language teacher. So like teaching the students that who are trying to go abroad. So they might take some language tests like IELTS or TOEFL, this kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm, now I'm just like doing the teaching job. Um, and uh, when, Back to my bachelor degree, I did my bachelor degree back in China as well. And my major at that time is the hospitality management. So that is a big reason because you can see that the, uh, the hospitality management and also let's say the human resources kind of major and also the marketing. So these are all like related to people. 
So that's the reason that I do like have this great passion like uh, to take the courses with Maria, like they work 6118, right? So yes, yeah. that course. And we did have a lot of fun over there. And uh, yes, that's pretty much. Oh, and also like I went to the uh, States for a while because I did my internship there in the Vail Resorts. And I did like a training program when I was doing my bachelor degree. Yes, and that is pretty much my like um, history experience. Yes. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Michelle? Hi there, my name is Michelle and I have the same background and same situation as Carol. Um, I major in marketing and human resource uh, and people organization and management in the University of Sydney. And due to, um, uh, after I graduate, graduated from the university, I, I just, um, I had one year uh, work, work experience as a marketing specialist in Sydney. And due to the COVID-19, now I start my work in Shanghai. Now I, I came into the retail industry and I worked as a um, sport leader coach in the castle. Yes. Thank you. Green, back to you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Marie. And thanks, Carol and Michelle, for giving us those introductions. So, Marie, I've got a couple of questions for you. So, in, when you um, initially came across Quich, um, what were the features in particular that drew your attention to the product and what was it about that that made you to actually to go ahead and implement it in, in the classroom and you've continued to use it for a number of years now? Uh-huh. That's a very good question. Thank you, Green. Uh, I think the were, from my memory, the were a few things that uh, drew my attention to Quich. One of them, the passion of the team. Mm -hmm. The passion of the team that develops the Quich and uh, your personal passion for it. And I mean it, I know that can sound a little bit weird, but I absolutely, absolutely mean it because passionate people make things happen. Passionate people, they do care and do, they do indeed develop every single little detail and they go above and beyond. So that's one thing. Um, not trying to flatter. <laughs> yeah, look, look, I'm... <laughs> I'm also known for my directness, absolute directness. <laughs> Everyone will attest to that. Uh, more, most importantly, uh, what I loved uh, when which was introduced to us in a session by my peers and including you, you uh, were at the university at this moment, I immediately saw the potential that this tool speaks to students in their own language in the way how they like to understand things and play with things and interact with things and feel engaged. And once again, maybe because I'm in communication that much, I always try to adjust my language to the audience I'm communicating with. So I saw it as a perfect tool uh, to get my message across and keep them engaged. Great. Engaged, Carol, Michelle? <laughs> Sorry, what? Were you engaged with? Yeah, with of course, like one hundred twenty percent. What did you like the <laughs> most about it? I mean, that if I have to say the most, that would be Maria yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's with passion. Really, like, uh, because, you know, like the, the spirit of the class, because every time you just, I do not feel like I'm talking to a teacher. I feel like I'm talking to a friend and the class is like full of activities and the students just really enjoy this, like interactions and some games. And we just talk like casually, but like still that we, we can like achieve the, uh, the goals that within the class. So, I mean, this is, so I do not feel like it's a class. I feel like it's just like a casual uh, catch up, but I can still like learn a lot of things. Okay. Michelle, what about you? What yes. did you like the most? Yes. About you were our champion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the thing I like most is that we can put our, the concept we learn in class into real practice. 
Yes, this is the one which impressed me a lot. Yeah, probably I should give a little bit uh, background to how we actually use Quich because we used it not in a way how you uh, originally planned grain. This is where our crazy creativity and innovativeness come to place because um, I will share my screen now. And I will show you the presentation. Uh, well, it's a very short one. A uh, slideshow that I showed at Learning, uh, Learning and Teaching Forum in 2019. Uh, we have this amazing tradition at the business school and I can see some people from the business school joining us uh, where we share ideas. That's amazing forum uh, where, we, where I personally learn a lot and I shared uh, my perspective on uh, which as well. So uh, basically, it helped us to build personal connections at scale. I was experimenting with action learning experiments via Quich. So uh, that's uh, right now you can see the structure of the course and uh, my girls probably feel a little bit nostalgic about that. Uh, conflict and effective communication, emotion and uh, nonverbal communication and different, different topics. Everything with bees, with bees is related to communication processes and was tied to a practical task. So let us say, for example, during uh, the lecture, we will be talking about assertive communication. And uh, after that, I would use which to task, to challenge students to address uh, some task, some activity, to practice it. So why did I use it? Because I wanted to enable the action learning. Uh, normally how it happens, if you give students a task today uh, and they need to come prepared uh, the week later, they will uh, at best, many of them would remember about that the day before or the same day. What was my ho homework? And for what I was doing, that was not good enough because I wanted them to engage into action learning experiments. For example, to practice I statement, what... Uh, I personally feel about uh, this particular situation and how we can resolve this conflict. Something about negotiation, something about the body language. Doing this activity on the same day was not good enough for me. So I used Quich to release these notifications to my students. So I had 134 students to engage, work 6118. And uh, yes, if students, your students are motivated, they always will learn a lot from theory, uh, which in my case helped me to uh, guide and motivate them between classes. So I extended this learning. Uh, the problem is that uh, when someone wants to be book smart, they do not actually engage into applying the concept. And as Carol said, it felt fun. It felt, it felt fun because uh, we were actually doing something and reflecting on this something. So, you do lots of activities in class, but you wash, want to, your students to push them to experiment with the same approaches in the big world. Apply it in the workplace. Once again, class is not enough. You need to ask them to go and to talk to their employer. And one of the tasks, as far as I remember, was to actually ask for a feedback from your employer or provide a feedback to your employer and to reflect on that after that and to submit answers via Quich. So yeah, most engaged students are willing to try, uh, but in the cluttered environment, as I already said, it's very easy to, to forget where to start. So Quich gave us instructions. ALE, Action Learning Experiment Challenges. Uh, so these are the specific instructions, how which team was helping me to set up uh, everything that I needed to set up. And uh, that's, for example, some of uh, the, the beginning of the answers that I was receiving. You see the question on the screen, challenge. Think of something you are not happy with uh, in behavior attitude of your peers, family members. It annoys you. So what do you do? 
practicing uh, assertive communication. And some of the, the beginning of the answers, obviously I could not show you all the answers uh, because of the confidentiality, but these ones just show the emotion that shines through the responses that students were submitting. And they were reflecting on that, applying concepts, what could have been done better. Uh, but I uh, used not only which in that, uh, I was providing them with feedback. Uh, I used SRES that was developed by the University of Sydney, Student Relationship Engagement System, to keep all the information together. So I could link uh, the task and the feedback that I was providing to students. And on your screen, you see an example of email me giving some specific feedback to uh, how students reflected on their experience uh, and uh, the student answer as well. So, which gave me lots of analytics, uh, so I knew who my champions are. Today we have three of them, three of my champions. Uh, leaderboard, you see ladies, behind the scene, this is how it looked like. <laughs> So, yeah, key advice, just start it. It can be a little bit scary, but you just need to start it. I uh, will stop sharing this screen now. Uh, and if, uh, if I can, uh, can I maybe uh, invite Chris uh, that we pre-recorded this uh, video of his? Okay, good, thank you very much. Great so, time, uh, yes. My next question was around the right. feedback that you received from um, from your students and how they felt it was helpful. So yes, please, you can. Uh -huh. We will start with uh, Christopher. Uh, okay, so here you go. Uh, he unfortunately could not join us uh, today live, so we pre-recorded it uh, yesterday. So welcome, Philippines. I'm currently in the Philippines. Um, and with regards to my perspective on Quitch, um, I could share my screen right now and then I'll, I'll just show you some here for discussion. Um, yes, so can you see wow. that? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this like, just goes over a bit of my background, um, so just ooh. a short agenda. Um, yeah, so just a brief background on myself. I've had a couple of internships in the past, um, and then I had a role with EY prior to taking up my, my master's degree. Um, and then obviously with my master's from 2019 to 2020, I specialized in aviation and maritime management and logistics. And I also specialized in people management and organization, which is the part where Maria comes in. You are a big part of that specialization. And I'm very glad to have taken that specialization. Um, I was also inducted into Beta Gamma Sigma. And I just graduated recently this October. Cool. So... I want to share Quich's value proposition um, from my perspective. Um, and this is from me taking up Quich, both from Maria's class and from a different class, which is a class in marketing. And I'll be showing Fantastic. the differences in the next slide regarding that. Um, so I believe that there is two-way learning and collaboration between lecturers and students. And I do believe that that is the way to go. Um, this is emphasized even more so during the pandemic because um, communication is limited. You can't really speak to students personally, so you have to find different avenues with where to communicate with them. And I think um, Quitch provides that avenue, um, while not so much in the extent that same uh, my uni or our dashboard through Canvas would. I think Quitch is a good platform with where you can essentially give feedback to one another. Um, it allows students to express themselves in a more personal and detailed manner. So with how Maria uh, did Quitch in our class, we essentially had activities after each uh, lecture session. And essentially people have more time to think over and review what they really um, learned from that session and apply it in Quitch. And it just gives them more time to write a more detailed review of what they think the, the lecture was all about during that day. Um, it's a medium which can encourage near 100% participation, whether live or during pre or post class. So this is especially true for those who are introverted in nature, because I believe in some cultures, some people will decide not to speak up because simply they were told not to do so unless they were told. So I think with Quitch, everyone has that opportunity to sort of share what they think about a certain topic because it's done kind of offline, um, right after class or right before class, and you could really submit what you think um, your thoughts are, you know, 
I think that's a very good takeaway from Twitch. Um, it also provides students with a sense of responsibility and ownership um, to sort of collect their key takeaways after each lecture session. So essentially, this is their time to reflect, and it's kind of like a refresher. Right after you've had the session, some students may not necessarily absorb everything that has um, been instructed or told to them. So this is their opportunity to sort of revisit it and, I guess, um, learn again, learn. And more importantly, it's also an opportunity for the teaching team to monitor the cohort's progression. So I believe this is more for Maria's side where you could kind of see the responses from each student and you could really see who's sort of gaining the most out of the lecture session and who is doing so well and who needs a little bit more help with regards to understanding a certain concept. So yeah, I'll move on to the next slide. Um, so like what I mentioned earlier, I actually had Quitch in two units. One of them was uh, Work 6118, uh, which is Managing Communications in Organizations. That was with Maria. And the other one was Marketing 5001, which was with, uh, I can't quite remember the name of the lecture, I'm sorry, but it, it, it was a marketing principles class. So starting with Work 6118, um, essentially Quitch was used after each lecture session as a means to improve communication techniques. So what we would do is um, there would be concept or framework specific activities that would sort of improve your communication style. Um, this was done right after each lecture. So if we had 12 lectures, there were, correct me if I'm wrong, 12 activities that we had to do as well to sort of practice in, in application what we had learned conceptually. Um, these were also used as points for discussion during subsequent sessions. So for example, if we had this activity that was done a week prior, we would talk about how that activity went the week after. And this was great to sort of critique one another um, where, where people could have room for improvement um, that was brought up. So I think that was a good way to sort of practice your communication techniques. Um, Can you give an example? Sorry for interrupting. Can you give an example of uh, something that uh, resonated with you from these kind of activities? Action learning experiments. Because uh, from my memory, uh, there were two types. One of them was based on theory, but uh, the second one was based on task. For example, uh, for example, for example, assertive communication. So we would study assertive communication during the lecture, and uh, as a homework, students would right. receive a task to practice assertive communication with I statements and to reflect on their results and to submit it via which and uh, the workshop after that, we would come together and also discuss our results. Uh, does anything, uh, uh, well, it was two years ago, but does anything ring, ring a bell? Yes, I remember there was one activity where we had to convince somebody to sort of, I think, do something that was out of their comfort zone, something, something similar to that. And uh -huh. I think this was a way to essentially get us out of our comfort zone because for somebody who may not be that used to convincing another person to do something this was a way to sort of really practice your negotiating and communication skills by trying to convince them that this activity may be fun or this activity may be worthwhile and sort of revisiting that uh, a week later the results of, of that was a, a good uh, practice as well because some people obviously will not be able to convince others to do a specific thing but the most important part is learning why that was the case. Like, why do you think you did not succeed in convincing another person about a, a certain activity? So I think um, the activity isn't isn't like uh, isn't isn't based on who gets things right and who gets things wrong. It's more of um, an activity that would allow you to sort of understand why you were able to successfully do something or why you were success uh, why you were unsuccessfully able to do something. Uh huh. Thank yeah. you. So now, who would yeah. talk the leaderboard? Tell us about that. <laughs> so um, the participation um, of Quitch in Maria's class was motivational driven. So this was more on like who would top the leaderboard. So the people who really committed to, to the app were those who wanted to really do very well in class, obviously, and to do well in, in the leaderboard, because Quitch has this leaderboard. Yeah, so moving on to... Um, which uh, being utilized in Marketing 5001. Um, this is a very different approach from how Quitch was used in Maria's class. Um, this was used after each lecture session as a means to test the student's grasp of the concepts. 
So these were actually quizzes after each class. I believe it was 25 to 30 items uh, after each class. And these are obviously related to the concepts and frameworks that were discussed in class previously. Um, it was very nice because it was used as a revision set for the course as a whole, um, particularly for exams. Um, I believe me as well as other people used it extensively to review for our exams because at the end of at the end of 12 sessions, there were over, I think, 150 questions through which that we, we reviewed, which was very helpful. Um, participation for this unit was actually incentive driven as opposed to motivational driven. So the top score of, um, of these quizzes uh, based off of Quiz app would gain additional participation marks at the end of the semester. So everyone really used it not just as the means to, to sort of re review the course, but as a means to hopefully, you know, come out on top and get up, uh, extra points for, for participation. So those were just the two different ways of how which was utilized between two, two units that I've taken in the past. So off to the next slide and my last slide. Um, it's about going mainstream with Quitch. And these are the things I think, uh, just some random thoughts on, on, on where, where I see Quitch going and what needs to be done, I think, to make it really mainstream and be used uh, across the board uh, in, in all units. Um, so number one, there needs to be unit tailored pre and post activities. Um, I think what was done in Maria's class and in the marketing class was very good because it was very consistent. There were activities after each session. Um, I think if you if you make that a lot less, like having two or three activities per semester alone, that wouldn't be enough. That wouldn't get a lot of engagement with students. Um, I'm sure Maria would also be able to tell that um, not everybody actually joins after the first activity. You need to have consistent activities to get as much engagement with people as possible. So I think doing that every week would be a way to get more people to join. Um, it's used as a means to promote live discussion instead of replacing it. So from from what I've experienced, Quitch was done before or after class, and then we discussed the results during class. So I think it is really a means for you to sort of review your your your, con your concepts and, and frameworks after class instead of just using Quitch during class. Um, um, thirdly, there is room for integration into assessments and exams. I think Maria's class actually incorporated this, where I think one or two questions about which were included in the final exam. So I think this is another point to gain engagement with people, um, is that if you say that this or some part of this will be included in the exam, more people will obviously participate, um, aside from it being just motivationally uh, driven. Um, fourthly, Applicability into the corporate world. Um, I think this is important because if you get Quitch uh, to be mainstream within uh, various units, this is a way for people to prepare themselves when they get into the corporate world, where if you sit in a round table having a meeting with other people, there is constant pitching of ideas, which I think Quitch is all about. It's all about getting your ideas across the board. And as, as we know, not everyone likes to just speak what's on their mind during class. So I think Quitch is an early start to how they can pitch their ideas and hopefully kind of apply that later on when they're um, in the real world working. Um, and finally, it's a way to accelerate personal growth and de development through feedback. So I think feedback is very, very important. Um, as much as we want students to participate in Quitch, I think it's just as important for the lecturers to also provide that feedback back to them which Maria and um, our marketing lecturer did very, very well. There was feedback right after every activity that we did, and this was individual feedback. Um, it is very tedious, I would assume, because if there are a hundred plus students take, using the app, you'll have to do, you'll have to give feedback for those hundred students as well. Um, if there is a way to make that easier, that could probably help the instructor the most, but I think feedback should not be um, overlooked. It should be something that um, every lecturer must give in order to, you know, foster development within the students. So that, at the end of the day, that's what Quitch is, is all about, right? It's to help develop students to, to become a better version of themselves. This is why we go to uni, and this is why Quitch, I think, is going to be a game changer if done effectively. And Maria, am I? Yes. Uh, yep. Timing. <laughs> Yes, thank you. For, I mean, Christopher, he makes, you know, so many um, great points there. And um, 
one of the ones I found particularly interesting was this point about um, students. Uh, Sorry. Who, yeah, that's okay. Um, students who have a, an introverted nature. And it was actually something that some colleagues at um, Monash University as well had made the same point that um, it was a number of them, um, they were particularly talking about um, international students who did not feel confident to speak up in class. But now that they had gone away, done these quizzes, like in the marketing course, for example, on which they discovered that they actually knew a lot of material, that they really understood the content. And what the lecture was saying, that it suddenly gave those students a voice because now they felt that they could speak up because they knew, because again, as Chris said about that immediate feedback, and that is exactly what Quitch is about, identifying for you where your areas of difficulty are so you can work on those and that reinforcement and consolidation of the primary learning. So I really like, uh, Maria, the way both you and the marketing, which I think is Mark, um, the marketing lecture was using Quitch to consolidate and reinforce directly after the lecture. Because um, as Christopher said, the other thing is about the consistency of delivery. And because the fact is that after each time a lecture or a class was delivered, then you were both following up and asking, well, what actually have people under understood? And I think also the important part, we talk about um, the analytics providing us data around performance. And Chris talked about that performance of the individual. He as an individual was getting that um, immediate feedback, which made a huge difference to his learning. But us as the educators are also getting it. So we can see what are the cohort actually struggling with? So I think really important that both elements um, are, are, are there. And um, the other thing I thought was interesting was um, the ability to revise. And again, it's feedback I've got from students before that at the end of that period, they've now got 150 odd questions across every single topic that they can on their, on their mobile phone, they can practice and again, see where their, you know, where their kind of concerns and issues are. So really interesting to hear from, from what Christopher had to say. And um, I was going to ask you another question, Marie, and I know we can come back to um, uh, the um, other students in a moment, but I also wanted to ask you about you as an educator, how Quitch has actually impacted your journey, if you like, or, or your way of, of delivering. How, how, was it, how has it added value, I guess, is what some of our um, colleagues on the call today would like to, would like to hear about. Uh, I totally agree about uh, which uh, and uh, preparation, uh, any kind of preparation, helping introverted, student, introverted students to shine. Uh, and uh, it gives them the feeling that they come prepared and they have something to say and during the class they say it. Mm. Uh, to me, uh, honestly, 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 every single week, when I was reading student reflection, reflections uh, by which and uh, experiments that they did, I was amazed uh, with uh, how many difficulties they are go going through hmm. and how many communication obstacles they experience and how much they need this kind of uh, commu communication courses to help them succeed not only with learning, but in life uh, in general. That was my uh, biggest takeaway. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, because it was this exper particular experience happened two years ago, it was my, the first time when I saw it that clearly and that persuasively reading these personal stories, uh, being in tears, uh, uh, of joy, actually, mm. because they managed to overcome it. That yeah. was my big thing. And uh, as Chris said, and as you said already, when we were to return to class, students felt comfortable to elaborate on that. But on that, I would really like to hear from Carol and Michelle what they think, how it helped them. It's most valuable to hear from you guys. Okay, so for me, I really take Quitch as the first. Um, I take it as the uh, like the uh, the notes after each class, the takeaways, because these questions or activities or tasks are like the most important stuff that I need to know within that certain classes. So the first way I can revise on this. So obviously, and then second, I can like real like do the practice stuff 
like um, during after the class, let's say. So the learning process could last for like a longer time, not just for like in the class, let's say an hour or like 40 minutes. So it could probably like last for a week because the task I might like um, have to think about it or maybe I just forgot and I remember in the middle of the week, then I pick it up and I have a look and do the tasks again. So it's like um, a very uh, like uh, continuous progress that I can make. And I also can get feedbacks from Maria about the, the thing that I was doing. So I can see that if anything that I can do to improve it or that if something that I did great. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I can do a self-reflection as well. And because uh, the Chris just talked about the feedback stuff, so which reminded me, um, I feel like we can also like set up the, uh, the, let's say the peer evaluation or like the peer feedback. So it's like, and we can share the stuff in class and we can see like, what about other people's opinion? So we can have like more voices about this task or we can have like more insights from like individual or like other perspectives. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, um, I think um, Chris is a tool that pushed me to go through what I've learned in class during the week. Um, to tell the truth, normally I'm not, if I'm not asked to do a kind of review after class, I might not reflect on what I've learned on my own. And I think Chris pushes me to do kind of reflection um, um, on what I've learned and also reflect on um, what can be done next time to make the result better. Um, I remember that. Um, in the weekly action learning experiment, there was a kind of um, real practice that asked us to put uh, what we learned during the class into real practice. Um, for example, um, one topic is one topic is about giving feedback. We were asked to give others feedback and ask others for feedback. Then we need to do kind of reflection and submit our own reflection on which. And there was one thing. Um, change in my life, um, but I cannot say this change is because of Krish, but Krish do help to this change. Um, the change is that I go over all the things. I got used to do self-reflection at the end of each day. And each night I just recall and list what I've done in the day as well as um, the things make me happy or sad. I just write them down in my notebook, not in my notebook to prevent me from get, forgetting these precious moments. Then I would reconsider if I made the right decision or and the appropriate action in the day. If no, I would consider what kind what can be done to prevent similar consequences. Yes, thank you, Michelle. That's great. Thank you for that insight. And um, interestingly, Carl and Michelle, you both talked a lot about, about the ability to get that personalized feedback. And um, one of the things we've done, and potentially it's based on your feedback maybe, but um, since, since you've used which we have now introduced this traffic light system. So what that does, it identifies in real time for you, what are the areas that perhaps you're not so strong and that we can see from the analytics has taken you a few attempts to get something right. So we'll highlight that in red for you. Those areas you're kind of, you know, kicking it out of the park they're kind of they're highlighted in green and then that kind of yellow and orange in between so i think and, and the other thing i picked up michelle on what you were saying there was the fact that the notifications were being pushed out to your mobile device reminding you to actually do some work from michelle or from your other lectures and so on and again i think that consistency that christopher talked about that if if maria for example just sent something out the first week and then maybe not until the fourth week again it doesn't have that same impact, I think, on student learning. It's that consistency because it's going to take, as we all know, it's going to take students a little while to get used to what the activities are going to be for each class. So I think once you get that consistency, once you get people on board, then I think you find that you, you kind of keep them engaged. So, yeah, thank you guys for, for both of you for sharing your stories with us. And Marie, I might hand back um, to you again at this point. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Maria, I will ask you a next question then. If you, if, have you got something you wanted to add about what the girls had said there? 
Ah, look, there's so much to to add that uh, we will be talking for ages. I'm I'm open to uh, to share this experience. But I do hope that you and I we will continue uh, developing this uh, separate maybe stream because which is mostly quantitative from my understanding, but yes. I try to use it in a more qualitative way yes. and. Uh, uh, the evidence uh, shows how much important it is and how much learning actually happens. And if we can make it happen, if, uh, if we can enable something else, something else, and something else to help our students learn, uh, universities will be uh, able to uh, develop graduate qualities that they want to develop. Employers will receive employees whom they actually want to see who can communicate already who have soft skills developed that's a very significant area uh, that is uh, well there's what's the, what is to say number one area that employers are looking at currently you can teach hard skills uh, mm -hmm. you can teach soft skills but you need yeah. to have a special attitude for that yeah and i think this ability as you said marie about your focus on that feedback and so on is you know so important so I think, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of learning for us. But I, I think the other important thing you said is that we need to continue to work together. And I think that's critically important that both from the student, I mean, I think a lot of the success of Quich has been that we've had people like Chris and Carol and Michelle give us feedback along the journey so that we are making sure that we're providing an experience that works for them. We can't just build it once and hope it's going to work for everybody. And I think too, Maria, with you and some of your colleagues at the University of Sydney giving feedback from the educator's perspective. So we've um, recently released the fourth version of Quitch and we're continuing on as we go on and, and add new features or maybe streamline some of the things that we have, but making sure that it continues to work from, from both perspectives. I think is, um, is critically important that we mentioned there. So Maria, one of the other things I wanted to ask you then was, is what advice would you give to anyone looking to introduce quitch and gamification, really quitch and gamification for their learners? Uh, start doing that. Stop thinking and start doing. Download the app. Uh, if you're listening right now at the beginning of this uh, webinar, grain shared uh, uh, QR code to download the quitch and to play with some features. Play with that, see for yourself. It's amazingly user-friendly interface when you receive these notifications. I used to receive them on my watch as well. Aha, uh -huh, okay, oh good. Yeah, so what I sent to my students, they already received and they are starting working on that. Very, very user-friendly. Uh, and uh, well, yeah, it brings a little bit more excitement because well, uh, let's be honest uh, here. Uh, these days, students, especially when we are uh, teaching and learning online, we receive so many emails from mm. the system. It is overwhelming. Mm. And I know for, uh, there was feedback from students that sometimes uh, they just sort all the notifications from the learning management system they tick all of them and they delete it without reading it. Mm. Do you want that to happen to the message you are sending to your students? I don't. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying to find ways uh, so that students feel motivated to read either my emails or additional ways to keep them engaged. Mm. So they are not on their email during the weekend, uh, weekend or between your classes, but they receive this notification that they need to do something because your uh, classroom design, it's not random, right? Yeah. You designed yeah. it in a way that on some specific day they need to review it. And in this case, it will stay, stick in their memory. Yes. And it will become a skill that they develop. And I think, yeah, sticky is yeah, a really important word there because we all know from, you know, the theory of the forgetting curve, if we don't, try and consolidate or reinforce what we've just learned, then it's kind of gone or it's going to take us a very long time to get it back. So that's, of course, one of the, one of the ways which was built around that forgetting curve theory and so on. So that idea, Marie, as you say, to send out those notifications. Students, when I was building Quitch, 
they had said, listen, we don't like email. We don't do emails was actually what they told me. <laughs> so, which I kind of knew because they never responded when I sent these out. No offense, Carolyn. Oh, no. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. And, 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 and that's the case. If, and so there's no point trying to fight City Hall. I say, if they're not going to read the emails and they tell us they're not going to read the emails, then we need to find a solution that works for them. So the students had said, but I will always have my mobile phone with me wherever I am, if I'm on the train waiting for friends. So, and I don't use it that productively at the moment, but if you've got something productive there for me to do, then I can do that. So for, from my point of view, I think the mobile phone is an underutilized resource. And that's for why- For educators. Yeah. Exactly, for educators. So I think it's a great way for us to um, connect with the students. And as you say, I also have always used it outside of the classroom. That's why in, initially I built it to, for exactly the same reason you said, Maria, to engage with the students once they leave the classroom and making sure that that reinforcement consolidation is going on before they come back the next week so that they're constantly being fed that information, keeping it, keeping it front of mind and so on. So, yeah, so I think there's probably lots we, over the next um, years, we can continue to improve from the student perspective and I'm sure from our perspective as educators as well. But um, I think we're, we're on the right path, it would seem, from, from the feedback that, we, that we've got so far. And so, Maria, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if anybody has any questions, if any of our attendees, does anybody have any questions for us, um, Rafa? So maybe we answered all the questions along the way. Carol, Michelle, maybe you have any questions to ask, because right now, th three of us and uh, other attendees, we have the honor of communicating with the person who is behind this amazing tool. <sighs> Yeah, that's harsh to come up with a question on the spot. Imagine I were to release it via Quich, huh? and you would have come prepared. <laughs> <laughs> this we've got. Um, so what is the process for uploading content into the platform? So there's a couple of ways that, um, uh, that you can do that. And one of the ways is you can simply type your question directly into the platform. You could copy and paste it if you had it from a Word document, or we've got a bulk upload CSV file where you can, uh, and then you can drag and drop your question. So a few different ways for you to do it. And it really depends on, you know, how much content you have, I guess, and whether some academics or some teachers are, you know, releasing the content week by week, but adding that content week by week. Other people set it up in advance. But I think the important thing to remember about the content as well is you want to make it kind of exciting. So you can add images, you can add resources, all of that. But also essentially, once you've done it, you don't need to redo it each semester and so on. Once you've done it, then it can be cloned and you're ready to go. All you need to do then is add your next group of, of students the, the, the following semester. So I see, I don't know if we have any other questions at this point i don't think we do we might have answered everything maria but maria i do want to say a huge thank you for joining us today and for all you do for students i must say i know they're always very appreciative of the input you put in the effort the energy and um, and i know they've talked about actually that you energize them as well which is a fabulous thing i think it's the highest compliment a, an academic or educator can get i have to say so um i yeah congratulate you on that and also for bringing Christopher in from the Philippines today to talk to us. And you brought Carol and Michelle in from China. We've had um, Fernando from Mexico, you said, join us. And I believe we have a number of people from India as well. So we really did, as Rafa said, do a around the world bit of a tour today. But Carol and Michelle, a huge thank you to you both for joining us as well. We really appreciate it. And we wish you every success in your careers. I'm sure you'll, you'll both do great. And we look forward to staying connected with you. I see we're all connected on, on LinkedIn at the moment. But um, Maria, I'm going to leave the final word with you and um, see if you have got anything you, you wanted to add there. Thank you very much, Green, for having us. Uh, we learn together. Students learn from us. We learn from them. And uh, there's always peer-to-peer -peer learning. I learn from you and you learn something from me. And as long as we, all of us, we... Uh, contribute to that and we are open to that we are on the right track and we will keep this train moving <laughs> we'll keep moving forward that's exactly right thank you so much Maria and for all of the t attendees who came along today as well thank you so much for joining us and Maria would it be possible to share um, Christopher if anybody would like um, Christopher's um, YouTube 
um, video as well. Would it be possible to share that? For yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You uh, you can share the link. Yeah, yeah, Great. absolutely. Yeah. So, Rafa, we might share that with everybody. And thank you so much um, to everybody for participating in the webinar today. And um, we look forward to continuing to work with you and um, continuing to improve the learning experience for our students. It's our, our main aim, and we'll, we'll, keep that, we'll keep that moving forward and, and keep focused on it. Thank you. Thank you for having us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Well done. Bye now.